Right, get we must always, always, and Zach Lacker for the Mola Sabos reminded us there. He's a hundred percent right. My life has changed, your life has changed, our Palestinian brothers' lives has changed. North, east, south, west, across the whole world, everybody's lives have changed and understand why. There's one reason because Allah is a changer of hearts. I to be truthful with you, initially I was getting very angry. All I was getting very upset, I was either flipping on people or just bursting out into tears when all this happened. It was one or the other. Until I came across the ayah in the Quran, where Allah says it's not the eyes that are blind, it's the hearts. Once the hearts have gone hardened and they become blind, there is no hope for humanity. So Alhamdulillah, that is across the whole world, because Allah refers to everybody in the Quran as insan. Insan means human being, which is why Muslims, non-Muslims, whether whatever religion, Christian, non-Christian, atheist, insan, human beings are standing side by side because we all have the heart. And the heart is what will unite us, inshallah. And always, always, always stay steadfast and keep uniting our hearts, inshallah. Right, we've got our next, we've got our, one of our, you know what, I'm actually kind of proud to introduce the gentleman who got me involved with the Palestine stuff with a gentleman called Dave Green from Huddersfield who has been for the past about 30, 40 years in solidarity with our Palestinian brothers and sisters and he helped me to get very active so please give him a big round of applause Dave is one of the legends man I love him thank you thank you thank you, thank you. how do I how do I live up to that eh? you, you built me up far too much man it is an absolute privilege and a pleasure to be standing here today talking to you here in Dewsbury today. The absolute privilege, there's no doubt about it, because you are the very best of humanity. You are the people with love and peace in your hearts, and you are the future of humanity. As Wasim said, my name is Dave Green. He, um, actually, it's not 30 or 40 years, it's more like 50, but we'll gloss over that one. Far too long, far too long. But I, I'm not going to speak for very long. But what I want to say is this. I have two things in my heart. And one of them is the anger that every single one of you feels and motivates you to come out time and time and time again. And that is anger at the horror that is going on. And I don't need to tell you, I don't need to detail the horror of what is going on in Gaza, and not just in Gaza, but in the West Bank as well. You've seen it on your YouTube, you've seen it on Instagram, you've seen it on all the feeds you follow. And I'm not going to dwell on that, but that is what motivates us to keep going. But there is another thing as well, the other side of that, which I think we all have to hold on to as well, and that is the hope. Because what I have seen, and one thing about 50 years of activism, is it gives you a perspective. I can remember when we chased the National Front out of Huddersfield uh, many, many years ago. I can remember when we stood in solidarity with the miners in 1972 and 1974 and 1984. I can remember when we built the Anti-Nazi League and built the protests against the Iraq War. And I have never been involved in a movement that has been so resilient and has kept going so long. Demonstrations that ordinarily, in ordinary times, would be massive on the streets of London, not just once or twice, but every single fortnight for six months. The hope stems from resistance. First and foremost, the resistance of the Palestinian people. And the leaders of Israel must have thought in the early days of October that they had a golden opportunity 
that the world would turn a blind eye. Well, they went in and smashed Gaza. And they could get away with whatever they wanted to do. But six months on, Israel has had to pull the majority of its troops out of Gaza. What they're up to, I can't guess. But I do know that even on Israel's own figures, they've only killed less than a quarter of the fighters, the armed fighters in Gaza. That is nowhere near what they thought would happen. And it is the resistance, but not just the armed resistance. It is the resistance of health workers in Gaza who keep on turning up and keep on treating the sick and the injured and the dying. It is the resilience of the aid workers, many, most of whom are Palestinian, who continue to dodge the bombs to get food to people to try to keep them going. That resistance has been inspiring. And that resistance all around the world, in every city,